Hello and welcome to a different type of video, long time no see. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new Adobe Aero. This is a beta version of the geospatial add-on. So if you hadn't seen the Google I.O. and Adobe recent announcements at the time of making this video, there is, you can now use Google Earth and use real life landscapes to track your augmented reality experiences. So I'm just going to go through how this works. Uh, so we're just going to press new file and I'm going to call this test, test project. There we go. This is going to be an absolute game changer for augmented reality experiences because no longer we're just stuck to targets or people or objects. We can now use physical places. Um, this does depend on obviously how good that location is in terms of space because you have to be standing a bit of a distance away, how good the Google map data is for that location and obviously what kind of phone you're walking. So just go press continue for now. So this here is the new thing. It uses the Google API and we can just type in a location. So I'm actually going to choose the University of Lincoln because that's where I'm currently residing at this very moment in time of making this video. And as you can see here, we have our Google Earth map. So what we're trying to do is we want to make sure that we put our pin in a location that's going to give us enough data or model data to be able to map our object against. So if we were to be, let's say, using the cathedral, which is up here somewhere, where are you? There we go. We'd want the pin probably somewhere towards the middle or towards the front, maybe, of the cathedral. I mean, we could augment that. Um, actually, let's, let's do the cathedral. Why not? Why do we do the cathedral? It might be a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. We'll do the cathedral. So we press select and it will generate us an anchor like so. There we go. There's our 3D map, our 3D uh, slice of Lincoln. And we're using the cathedral here. This little gray thing here you can barely see is our ground plane. So if our model, our anchor wasn't in the right location, we could adjust the altitude. So these coordinates here are the coordinates that's taken from this position of this space. And let's say I didn't want this space or it doesn't map correctly um, and it cuts a bit off the back, let's say. We can go back into the edit tool and we can always recenter or choose a new location and just press select and it changes it for us. I'm not going to do that now, but as you can see, it's powered by Google's Geospatial Creator. Woo. So if you've not used Adobe Aero before, uh, I'm going to go very whistle stop on this, but essentially you can import images, you can add sounds and 3D models. So essentially any of these formats you see here can be added into our scene. Um, let's just come back out of that for a second. Um, and then obviously we also have access to some pre fab shapes that it comes with. And I'm just going to use those today for the purposes of this exploration video. So we simply will choose our content that we want to be mapped. So this anchor is our tracking point. So the end user, let's say, if we want them to scan the front of this building and them to see some 3D elements, they will simply scan a QR code and once they're in that location, move their phone, their iPhone or Android phone left to right a few times until it kind of picks up the space and maps correctly. And then any lo any content that we now pin to the scene will appear in that location. Bear in mind, obviously, things like clipping and occlusion and all that stuff, we do have to be a bit aware of. It's a little bit one of those things where it's best to map and test this out in the actual space where you are. So let's say I was to this cathedral and I wanted to test it working. I would need to take my laptop and my phone to the cathedral and then do slight adjustments if things aren't quite lined up the way I want them to be. So just bear that in mind. So I'm going to choose a robot because why not? And I'm going to scale this up quite a bit. So 
make them let's make them quite big make them like 30 ish and all i do is now i can move them around so if i click the little white handle down here it basically will map to the 3d surfaces so because this is a 3d um, mesh that the cathedral is we just can pin them to a side of a wall or we can pin them to the ground so I want them to be on the ground in this case um, the ground itself doesn't actually have an anchor point so let me just go back to the anchor and check here so snap to anchor is on let's just pull this up a bit because it's a little bit on the wrong uh, height there we go and then I'm just going to move my robot and have him standing in front of the cathedral. Give him a little rotation. And as you can see, he's occluded. As long as the 3D mesh data occludes the object, it should occlude the thing that we put in our scene. I'm going to also put some ornate stuff in there. Uh, let's see what else could we put in there. We could put some symbols in there. Or we could put some urban stuff. We could also put, like I said, just logos or images in there of ourselves that we wanted. Um, let's have let's have this robot trying to grow some little plant life in the front yard of it. I'm going to scale this up to be let's say ten. No, nope, let's go a bit bigger than that. Twenty-five. We'll go 25. So he's going to be caring for this little plant and hopefully it'll grow into something huge and powerful and whatnot. But we're going to also start having it creeping onto the side so we can start to see the life taken out of the cathedral. We can start to see vegetation growing on it. So let's put this as a 45 and just uh, start having these... Uh, hanging off the edges of our cathedral, like so. Now, you don't want to be packing your scene with too much uh, 3D models or too much content for two reasons. One, the more stuff you add in there, the larger your file size becomes. Therefore, the end user has to essentially download these files. Um, although they're not having to download a application of an error viewer, which is downloaded when they scan the QR code, it does ideally you don't want to be a bombarding them with huge file sizes because the experience gets hampered greatly if they're having to spend 20 30 minutes waiting for the thing to download before they can actually experience your augmented experience now at the time of making this video the adobe aero viewer i haven't had amazing experience with um the view itself works really well it the seamless of you know point your phone at the qr code that you, and it just starts opening up your scene. That's fine. But I have been running into a few bugs where it has basically been stuck on the prepared screen. Now, I will do an update to this down the line. Uh, I will look at Adobe View Aero maybe in a couple of weeks or months time or when it's released and see how the state of play is then. But I just wanted to give a kind of quick overview, initial impressions of it. So I wanted to so show you how it works and what it kind of is all about. So I'm going to, let's say, start an animation and we want this action to be play animation and we'll have the robot stretching, yep. And I'm going to make him a loop so it's going to be infinite. So if we press play and our scene is a scene, we'll see our robot doing all his little stretching animation like so. And he'll just loop around constantly doing that in our space. Um, let's see, what if I wanted my plant to grow? Let's see if we can make this grow. So I'm going to have this and we're going to go to scale. So choosing our sprout, we're going to make him scale. And I want him to grow over, let's say, five seconds. Can I adjust the scale? So let's see what's happening. What does that do? There's nothing, so let's adjust the scale to what happens if I make it three times. So that's going to grow three times. Okay. Can I change its initial starting point? Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. So I click on the spread. 
Do I have an origin point that I can change? Origin um center. No, it's not quite having how I want it to. So let's also have its position move if we can. So we'll get to move. So we'll keep it at its initial position here. Uh, it's going for five seconds. So we'll also have this go to five seconds. And we're going to have it so it stays where it is initially. And then we're going to offset it. Just eyeball this initially. Okay, it's not doing anything there. So X, Y. Let's just do some large just to see if it actually is controlling anything or moving anything. Oh, it is moving, it's just very subtle. So let's do this as 150. Have this stay there because we don't want it to be going up and down. Let's try that again. Ah, so Z is up on this. No, Y is up, okay. Y is up. So I want this to go 150. There we go. So in theory, as it scales up, it should also move. So it will slide a little bit, but it won't slide quite as much. And I only want them to play once. So, and I'll have a bit of a delay. So let's say have a 30 second delay on both of these before they start from the point of the user tracking our scene. Like so. Could also add things like triggers, so we could say, let's say, when the user taps, that we have um, do, 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 do. could have it play some audio maybe. Do we have any audio? Um, do we have any audio? Can I add some audio in? No, nope, that's not how that's going to work. Can't see any audio. Okay, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't go with audio then. Maybe we go with show, and we'll make it show the spread when we tap the screen. Yeah. And let's just check. So we could duplicate group things. Align, automatic rescale, revert to original. Okay, so what will happen now is when we've done our scene and we're happy with it, let's imagine we've made this a lot more, you know, made this how we want it to be, got our scale correct, everything how we want it to be. We just simply go to share. We give our project a name. So this is what the end user will see. So let's say Lincoln Cathedral by Sprout. And we can choose an image that the users see. So I'm just going to choose a just choose a generic one for now because I don't really have a specially made image for this. We'll choose this screenshot here. That'll be our image for now. Uh, and it'll tell you here what the estimated project size is. So the bigger this is, the longer it will take for the end user to be able to access it and more problems they could have with preview in your AR experience. So we're trying to optimize everything as much as we can. Um, but I'm just going to click generate link. This will now synchronize our project. So it'll save it to our online profile. And it'll also generate us a QR code. So let's just uh, wait for this to kick in. This sometimes can take a while, depending on your internet connection.
And again, to be able to preview this really, you need to ideally be in that location. So if you press preview, it's just gonna show you this as a, a blank scene. Um, but what will happen is if anybody wants to preview this, for example, they can just either use this link here or point their phone at this QR code. And once they view, point their phone at this QR code and they go to that location and they follow the on-screen instructions, they should be able to see the augmented reality content physically overlaid within that space. So this is Adobe Aero with the Geospatial Google Geospatial add-on. Now the Geospatial Creator add-on is also available within Unity and we'll be potentially looking at that in a, in, in a future video. But for now, I just want to show you my first impressions. We'll do a more in-depth video of Adobe Aero uh, down the line, looking at the app experience. But I just wanted to show you how it's changed from the desktop within the beta at this point in time. And again, this is early access. This is a beta version. This could all change. Anything you see here is, you can take somewhat of a pinch of salt, but hopefully, it shows you premise and the future well augmented reality experiences and it's super exciting for us to get involved with remember to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you again soon goodbye